A pedophile is anyone who is sexually attracted to children. And children is anyone under the age of 18. Therefore, in my opinion, I do not give a goddamn that he is the Pied Piper. I do not care that he is the king of R&B. I could care less that he is the creator of, of the cabaret and cookout classics, Step in the Name of Love. That waste of space is a pedophile. I tried to watch this documentary as a whole. I've only watched bits and pieces because I couldn't handle it. And the reason I could not handle it is because I'm a domestic violence victim myself. And it was hard to watch. I am someone who has had things happen to me in my youth that I felt that I didn't have protection against. And it made it hard to watch. So I've only saw bits and pieces of the documentary. The reason I am angry is because social media. If I didn't learn anything else from this documentary, this documentary showed me who people really are. Who they really are. And a lot of the people I follow, a lot of the people I associate with, it's people that I've been friends with, people I've went to school with, are disgusting. I have seen tweets and status, statuses defending him. I've This one status read something along the lines of, R. Kelly is a victim. R. Kelly needs our help. We need to surround our brother and hug him. We need to protect our black men. That post was created by a woman and it was shared by three other women. What does him being a black man got to do with him being a monster? That's one of the problems we have in our African-American community. We are so fixated and stuck on that ideologic idea and that unwritten rule that says because we're African-American, we have to accept, we have to tolerate, and we have to love any and everybody, no matter what it is they do. This situation is a situation where that rule should not apply. I don't care if he was a victim. I can totally understand if somebody took his innocence away from him. I get it. It's hard. But just because that may have happened to you, that does not give you the right, the authority, or the authorization to do that to somebody else. So for women to share that, I was disgusted. And the other issue with that is, I didn't see anyone say anything about the women. Nobody was saying, oh my God, we have to do something to help these young women nobody said anything like oh my god we need to surround these women we need to embrace the, embrace these women we need to hug them we need to let them know that they are love we need to let them know that they are here we need to let them know that they are somebody we need to protect our queens we need to be there for them let what can we do to help them because this doesn't stop for them at this documentary when you are abused, I don't care if it's emotional, if it's physical, if it's mentally, that shit stays with you forever. Forever. Nobody was saying anything like that. Everybody was protecting him because he is a musical 
genius. I've unfollowed and unfriended so many people. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's disgusting. It's kind of like the Bill Cosby situation. Everybody loves Bill. Everybody loved Bill Cosby. Everybody loved Heathcliff Huxtable. Heathcliff Huxtable was the dad of all dads. Every little girl, every little boy across the world, no matter what your race was, no matter your, where you came from, no matter how poor or how rich your parents was, everybody loved Heathcliff Huxtable. Everybody wanted Heathcliff to be their dad because he was so cool and he was just so funny and he was the best. But... When the cameras were off and the lights was out, Heathcliff was no more. Bill was present and Bill was raping bitches. Why is it that nobody rallied behind Bill? It, was, it wasn't a whole lot of, oh my God, this was so long ago. Oh my God, they need to get over it. Oh my God, wait, wait. Why didn't they do nothing then? That's all the stuff people were saying when Bill Cosby got in trouble. Why the hell are y'all saying that to R. Kelly? I don't care if this shit happened yesterday. I don't care if it happened last year. I don't care if it happened two years ago. Ten years ago. He's a fucking monster. And he should have been stopped. And my issue with some of the parents in that documentary from the bits and pieces I've seen is, in my opinion, they failed their kids. They failed their kids. This man supposedly married one of the young ladies at 15. 15, granted. She supposedly, somebody supposedly altered her age on the paperwork or whatever. Whatever. She was still 15. The parents are saying, well, the mom is saying they were all, she was always with her. He, he didn't sex her in front of nobody. He didn't do this. He didn't do that. Where the hell was you when they got married? Because marriage licenses can't lie. So where were you when they got married? And if you chose to have the marriage annulled, why didn't you choose to have that man arrested for statutory rape. Why did I don't I don't get it. A lot of the and some of the other parents in there, one parent, I love her. She fought. She got her baby back. She was getting her baby back. But some of them, it was like, in my opinion, y'all allowed this to happen. I will go to bat for my daughter. I will kill for my daughter. I will go to jail for my daughter. I'm not, this went not going down for me. So how can you now be on TV uh, talking all this stuff, but you didn't do enough then? All of these women, all of these young girls, he prayed after when they was 14, 15, 16, 17. Y'all as parents, y'all didn't press any charges. Y'all didn't do anything. Like it's, I can't believe it. I'm so disgusted and the crazy thing is everything that's coming out in the documentary has been said for years i can remember all of this r kelly stuff coming about when i was in high school and i'm about to have my 20th class reunion next year so that tells you how long ago this has been going around but now that these women sat in front of a camera now people want to believe it. We have to stop failing victims. We spend so much time protecting the people who cause harm, the people who do wrong, that we don't protect our victims, y'all. We have to do better. You know, it's kind of like when your homeboy get locked up. He get locked up. He was selling drugs. He shot a couple of people. He did some home invasions. But somehow, some way, 
We be writing posts. Oh my God, free mook mook. Free little, free little Beatty. Free little John John. No, 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 no. How about they shouldn't have did the shit they did. They got them in that shit in the first place. Why are we protecting R. Kelly? And I can't believe it. I seen this one guy. He has a beautiful daughter. We went to, I think, junior high school together. He was like, I'm still going to buy his music. <laughs> and then another guy, he was like, I'm still going to bust a nut to his songs with the fist pump emoji. Like, what are you going to do? Are you going to laugh when it's your daughter? If you find what these women went through Funny, if you find humor in what R. Kelly did to them, will you be laughing if it happens to your daughter? If your daughter grows up and meet a man that decides that he wants to make her his punching bag, are you going to laugh? If you do, you just need to buy him his boxing gloves. Are you going to laugh if your daughter innocence is taken from her? How would you feel if your daughter is raped or molested or, or mentally, emotionally, and physically abused and held captive? You find this funny? That's what kills me about humans. About humans. Stuff like this do not bother them or affect them because it's not happening to them directly. But just because it's not your daughter today, that doesn't mean it won't be your daughter tomorrow. We have to protect what's ours from monsters like him. You can love R. Kelly as you want, all you want. You can love his music. I can't take that away from him. He is a musical genius. He is who he is. He's done great things musically. But the same way you can't take that from him, you cannot take away that he's a fucking monster. He is absolutely disgusting. Disgusting. And he needs to be stopped. I'm so sick of hearing all these stories. I'm so sick of hearing all the tears. Has any one of these women researched statute of limitation laws in their state or in the state that this stuff happened? Why no charges is being pressed against him? Why is Bill Cosby in jail? But this man not. Shouldn't both of them be cellmates? Like, I don't understand. And to all of you that feels like, oh my God, it was so long ago. Oh my God, they need to let it go. Let me tell you something. I was abused twice in my life by two different people I had somebody I'm not gonna say who I had somebody um constantly rape me because I wouldn't give it up to him anymore because I didn't want him that same person he will beat me um I've been sodomized by him I can remember one time that he hit me in my ear we were driving. He was driving me home. And he asked if he could come up. And I said, I didn't think that was a good idea. And we was going over this bridge. We hung out. And he punched me on the side of my face. So hard that the car went like this. And to this day, I cannot hear that great out of that ear. To this day, I cannot drive over a bridge without having an anxiety attack. To this day. I've had somebody beat me down verbally. Tell me I was ugly. Tell me I wasn't good enough. Told me I wasn't beautiful. Told me I was some shit. Told me I was garbage. Told me all of these things. And when those things is told to you so much, you tend to believe it. I'm 37 years old. That stuff still affects me to this day. I'm still trying to build myself up from those words that happened over 15 years ago. Over 15 years. I This other guy, I remember he could not hold his booze. It didn't matter what type of booze it was. It could have been Hennessy. It could have been some Remy. Or it could have just been 
a damn wine cooler. And that would set him off. And his thing with me is, whenever I would try to walk away from a conversation, he would grab a piece of my clothing. Everything's hung up. He would grab a piece, excuse me, a piece of my clothing and yank me back. He would put it around my neck to yank me back, drag me to him, and then put me in like a chokehold type thing. To this day, at 37 years old, Hugging is difficult for me for two reasons. One, I wasn't hugged as a child. That's not something we did in my family. They didn't hug. There was no emotions. It was kind of like that wasn't allowed. Okay, so we never hugged. And two, hugging always made me think of him after he dragged me with my dress Put me in a hug and a choke hold so tight I would pass out just to wake up with my panties off and his stuff released all over my bottom half. I'm 37 years old. I've been married almost five years. Do you understand? Do you realize after being married for almost five years, I'm just starting to be comfortable hugging my wife. I'm just starting to be comfortable to drive over a bridge without having to be like, <gasps> okay? I'm just being able to sleep all night. I still can't sleep with the door open. But I'm just taking them baby steps. So how dare some of you tell these women that they should have been over this stuff. They should have been over all of this. How do you get over shit like that? You can't. You can't. I, I have no words. I'm just disgusted. I don't even know if this video is going to be posted. But I'm absolutely disgusted. Men like R. Kelly needs to be stopped. We need to protect our children. We need to check, protect our boys. We need to protect our girls. We need to start protecting the victims and stop protecting their attackers. Tell me your opinion down below. Your opinion might not match mine's. Maybe I'm a little passionate about this because I am a victim and I am a mother of a female and one of my biggest fears in life is that she is going to find somebody that do to her what other men has done to me. Tell me your thoughts below.